how much aluminum fits in this big new crucible I got, and do these new tongs I made uh, work worth a crap? Let's find out. So for those of you wondering where my metal comes from, I get a lot of these from work. These are dead dryer motors, and you see they have a, a shell on them made of cast aluminum. And then inside there's a bunch of stuff. Well, I chop them apart, end up with this pile of remains here. There's the varnished copper and some magnets and some other junk, and I don't use any of that. We give them to a scrap guy. And I end up with just a whole bucket full of these little offcuts. These are from the shell of that motor. And this is where I use, where I get most of my aluminum that I use for casting. I'm pretty sure it's a die cast alloy. You can see the, the marks of where the die was. So it's probably A380, a very common die cast alloy. Not really a sand casting one, but has a high enough silicon content that it still flows pretty well. Better than cans and extrusions anyway. And I have this new crucible. You can see it's got a number eight stamped in there. It's pretty big, it might be number eight. I have a much bigger one on the shelf that also has an eight stamped into it. So a little confused there. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna fill that up with metal from the bucket. And we're gonna fill up those little bricks there. There's probably gonna be too much metal for that. So I'm gonna have to dump, wait for them to solidify, dump them out and then pour again. But that will be fun. I mean, I could always just look up how much metal fits in one of those. But, you know, looking up stuff is for nerds. I'd rather melt something and find out that way. And I'm actually not going to use my normal foundry burner. I'm going to use that simple little one that I made a few videos back. I forget how long ago it was, the Raku Kiln. That one, I'm going to use that one because uh, it can work in modes other than full blast. My normal foundry burner here only goes basically max power or nothing. And max power can melt cast iron, so it's a little bit too much for aluminum. I have a theory that the reason my old crucibles got really unevenly just wrecked is because I was using way too much heat and it would destroy the crucible. So I'm thinking a little slower, more even heat will help me out. It'll also make it so that like between the first pour of the ingots and the second pour, hopefully the metal won't overheat in there. Not that it matters because I'm just making ingots here and I'm not actually putting them into a casting. Porosity is not a big deal. And if you hear explosions, it's July, beginning of July as I'm recording this, so you're gonna get some stuff blowing up. Hopefully not on camera, but in the background, other people having fun. So because of the fireworks in the background, we're gonna do voiceover for the rest of this. I'm taking a look here. I've already got the metal started to melt and you can see kind of that crusty surface of, of crud and crust. And I've been pulling some of that out and you can kind of see that in the, the dross bucket here or what used to be some ingot molds. And this filling it up process took took kind of a while. I don't have the furnace cranked into like blinding heat like I usually do. But once the, once the aluminum started to melt, I had no problem keeping it melted. It went it went just fine. When I got it more full, you know, the, the crud got a little bit easier to, to reach with the scoop. And I just kind of scooped it out, stuck it in this pan. You may not have to scoop everything out all nice and cleanly, especially if you're just doing ingots, like because we're going to remelt these and any of the crud will float back up at the top. But who doesn't like pulling crap out and seeing a nice shiny melt, hmm? And now for the fun part. You can see there's quite a bit of room in the furnace, even with this larger crucible. I don't quite grab it right. You see the spout is a little bit away from me. It should be a little bit away, but not that much. And as a result, they kind of spill everywhere. And it's also kind of bad practice to pour from such such a height. Like you, you just kind of want to tip the metal in. That's more important when you're doing an actual casting. These just, again, these are ingots. We're going to remelt it. But the turbulence are going to mix up air and, and oxide and stuff in there. And that's that's just bad. So you, you don't want to like have a waterfall into a mold. Ingots, ingots don't really matter. Still plenty left in there though. And I, I'm not going to fill up anymore. I just, I want to see exactly how much fits in one full crucible. Of course, before I can pour more, I got to wait for these things to solidify. So there's a bit of cooling off they're going to have to do. And in the meantime, the crucible is going to have to hold molten aluminum kind of kept at temperature this whole time. At least the entertainment was good, and as a plus, all of this kind of distracted everyone from the fact that I was melting stuff in the middle of the night, and it was easy to see. Funny thing, flying and exploding fireworks I think are illegal in my state. Not that you could tell, or not that anyone cared either. Of course there was a drought going on, so maybe it wasn't a great idea to be launching these things. Now these were solidified, but I don't think I let it cool off enough. Aluminum has a lot more heat expansion contraction, so uh, if you let them cool it down all the way, they'll just fall out of these steel molds. And I, I had to, to force them out of there, although they were they were fully solid. I hit them with the thermometer and they were only like 600 degrees. And you really don't have to dump these into a bucket, but I, I like the sound. For this next pour, I thought I'd take you a little bit closer and kind of zoom in. 
this, these tongs are actually really easy to control. It's I had the I had the thing clamped in a little bit better, so it actually came out of the spout, and it was very easy to get it right down there and tip it. It's it's very easy to get the thing closer to the t to the mold, especially if the crucible isn't full like right to the brim. I was able to shake it. I probably shouldn't actually have shooken it, shaken it, shooken it, whatever, because a bunch of the dross fell out onto the ingot, and now it's unsightly. And again, dumping them into the water. Now something to keep in mind, aluminum holds quite a lot of heat and dumping these like 600 degree ingots into the water will actually heat the water up quite significantly. So if you're not counting on, if you're not expecting that, it, it can be a burning surprise. I hit the, the water with a thermometer after this, the IR thermometer, and it read 120 degrees. You know, that's not boiling, but you're definitely not going to jump in a hot tub at 120 degrees. All right, and the results are in. How much does it weigh? This I'm going to grab my, oops, I'm going to grab my filthy, filthy glaze chemical weighing scale here. Try to do it in both imperial and wrong units for any of those out there in some other countries. So how am I going to balance all these? All right, there you go. Eight pounds, 14 ounces. Let me give it to you here in other units. Um, that many grams, 4,024 grams. So just over four kilograms of aluminum that I got. Man, that unit button is just not working. Oh, there we go. 8 pounds, 14 ounces. Okay, we're back We're back to where we started. There you go. A little over 4 kilograms, almost 9 pounds. That is a, a mighty stack of aluminum ingots. But as a bonus, I thought it would be interesting to weigh the dross also. So this is pretty much all the dross. You can get a sense of how much metal I got versus how much garbage I got. And you'll, you'll see that uh, the amount of dross you get will vary considerably. Um, one of the things that makes it change quite a lot is how clean the metal is. So if you melt uh, fairly clean metal, you'll get much less dross. If you melt cans, you'll get a billion tons of dross. That's in part because there's, uh, there's a plastic liner in the cans, and uh, you have to burn that out, and it gives you a bunch of crap that gets in there. Also, the metal's so thin, it oxidizes a lot of it as it's melting. There, about 12 ounces or so, although ounces, 346 grams. There, it's much more exact. Actually, this, I don't know if it'll fit over here. This is a much finer scale, 12.146 ounces. So, oh, dropping it everywhere. As, as, as big as it is, it's actually very light because most of it's garbage and air. Most of the aluminum came out. I did not flux any of these to try to squeeze out any little bit of extra metal because, like, why? There's a couple ounces of aluminum in their tops. This is, like, nine pounds. So, not a bad, not bad waste. There you have it. That how, that's how much aluminum came out of that big crucible with an ambiguous number on it. Hope that was helpful. Also, crucible tongs, they work pretty good. Sorta. There are some issues.